the world's biggest cruise ship is nearly as long as the Empire State Building is tall. It's got 20 decks, a water park, and seven pools. But its main amenity is its food. Our research tells us that our guests' number one priority before they make a vacation decision is they want to know what they're going to eat and drink. Feeding up to 7,600 passengers and 2,300 crew members means a staff of more than 1,300 people work around the clock, stocking, preparing, and serving an incredible amount of food. So guests get an all-you-can-eat experience, all while the company tries to minimize waste. And the complicated process of food prep all starts here. Before every voyage, Icon of the Seas stocks up with massive amounts of ingredients. Everything from flour to butter, fresh produce, and meat. Food enters on deck two of the ship, through a main passageway they call I-95, after the highway. It goes all the way from the front to the back end of the ship, connecting the stock rooms to the prep rooms to kitchens, also known as galleys. Every week when we turn our ships around, a truck will deliver you know, the amount of beef we order. That may be a truckload. It shows up, it gets put into the inventory, which is our large storage system. Staff plan the shipments based on historical data of what passengers eat on certain routes. It can adjust sourcing based on how many of its travelers are children. When its projections miss the mark, the company will go to significant lengths to keep everything on the menu in stock. You know, it's not like a shoreside restaurant or hotel where if you don't have the product, you can go to the convenience store next door to the supermarket and pick it up. Once we're at sea, we're at sea. Just a couple of days ago, there was a special product we needed for a ship, and we air freighted that from Miami to make sure that we had it on board the ship. But usually, there's plenty of food, because the company knows it's one of the main reasons guests are on the ship. Ingredients are stored in 22 inventory rooms, including fridges and freezers. Twice a day, chefs from each restaurant put in orders for what they'll anticipate they'll need later that day and the next day. And inventory staff gather the ingredients. Then they're taken to prep kitchens. Here, staff cut all the produce they'll need for each meal, at least 30,000 per day. There are other prep kitchens for butchering beef and cutting seafood. Staff work hours in advance, so these ingredients will have time to go to the 37 kitchens around the ship. Like this one where a team prepares tens of thousands of desserts and baked goods. Staff mix, roll, cut, and bake, with machines to automate a lot of the process. So they end up with about 5,000 mini baguettes. We have 32 person here to manage the operation. We have a night team and we have a day team. Staff in this kitchen go through about 250 pounds of sugar every day, making items like baked Alaska. 1,600 of them. Before dinner, food has to be approved by the ship's executive chef, who checks that dishes follow the recipes. It's important to get them right, because these dishes are being made on a massive scale. 4,000 lobster tails, 1,000 New York strip steaks, and over 40,000 portions of dessert for just one night. How many pounds of onion you use for this? I used uh, for almost 400 pounds. Yes. Good job. Thank you, chef. Our main dining room feeds over 6,000 guests every single evening with a la carte menus that change every single day. There are also nearly 40 other restaurants, bars, and lounges serving food, from sit-down supper clubs to buffets, a pizza shop that's open late, and a 24-hour cafe. The goal is to cook enough that guests can eat whatever they want, but also to reduce waste. Every year, Royal Caribbean Group ships produce a huge amount of waste. Over 50,000 cubic meters in 2022. That's enough to fill about 13 Olympic-sized swimming pools with compressed trash. Leftovers mean Royal Caribbean is paying for too many ingredients and wasting labor. And it also means that the ship has to deal with more trash. There's also an environmental impact. Cruise ships collectively dump more than a billion gallons of sewage into the oceans each year according to environmental nonprofit Friends of the Earth. That includes food waste that can be toxic to marine life if it's not treated properly. To reduce waste, staff at some self-serve locations, like the main buffet, have started weighing certain foods before they're brought out, and then weighing what comes back. It uses this data to decide how much of each item to order and put out at different times, and how large to make portions. At the beginning of the shift, 
we measure all of the items that go out to the buffet and as they come back at the end of the day, we measure all of the wasted items. That allows us to provide an actual versus theoretical, what was produced versus what we should have used. That allows our chefs to provide better information to their teams to make decisions about production and how much food to make every single day for our guests. The company says it's reduced waste by 24% since 2019, and it's aiming for a 50% reduction by 2025. There will always be some waste. Food can stay on buffet lines for up to four hours, though some items need to be replaced sooner to maintain taste and quality. But staff clear and dispose of everything when the meal window ends, giving them time to set up for the next meal. To be completely honest, our kitchen never sleeps. So we've got people you know, getting to the butcher room at four in the morning. We've got people at the bakery at midnight baking bread for the next morning. It's a significant 24-hour day operation that continues while our guests are asleep as well.